the Africa continental free trade area, how can we make sure that places on the continent where there's surplus, that can flow down to Namibia and parts of southern Africa that are facing this massive crisis right now? Um, both the minister and Dr. Mwangi spoke about access to markets. The continent of Africa imports over $100 billion worth of food annually. Rice, maize, soya, different types of grains. The largest, the highest import uh, tariff that ourselves as Africans impose against one another is 65% um, on agricultural products. So if you look at, uh, on the range of um, what we call tariff peaks, the largest and the highest tariffs that we impose against one another as Africans is on agricultural products. And yet, and yet, we are importing over $100 billion worth of food from other parts of the world. Now, if you go to Zimbabwe, if you go to Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia had a surplus on wheat, and so did Zimbabwe and a few other countries. The barrier that we must eliminate as a matter of urgency is intra-Africa uh, uh, prohibitive tari tariffs for uh, trading in agricultural, uh, basic agricultural products. This is the number one challenge. Ukraine feeding a lot of um, the continent. Even during a war, they have a project called Grain from Ukraine that is still sending us grain going to Ethiopia and Somalia and other parts of the continent that we rely on a country at war to feed ourselves. Yet, even when we are starving, we make it so hard for food to come from the neighboring country or a country two um, regions down. And this is not changing. I, I wonder how to unclog this. Dr. Mwangi, you speak to African presidents. <laughs> what are they telling you? I put him on the spot. He doesn't know how to start. <laughs> how to say this diplomatically. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I, I think, uh, like um, my brother, uh, the Secretary General of the African um, Continental Free Trade Area, I think uh, the African leadership is coming to terms with the reality. And the reality is we have to change. It hasn't worked, and it, it is sad if we expect to continue doing the same thing and expect change. Right, because I think you saw uh, Pre President Museveni was in Nairobi a couple of days ago and he said, oh, you're blocking my, my, my eggs from coming in and my milk from coming in. And he was like, this makes no sense. We're the same people. Absolutely. So I think that change, and that's what Rwanda has called for, that change must come today, not tomorrow. Because as has been said, there is a window of opportunity. Global geopolitics have disrupted the supply chains. That gives Africa an opportunity to fill those supply chains with its own production. Uh, before COVID, Ethiopia was in, importing wheat. We just now had uh, Ethiopia is exporting wheat, including Zambia, mm -hmm. countries that were not producing. So it can be done within a very short uh, period. But there must be a coherent policy position that uh, is integrated and makes agriculture a productive economic sector, not a social sector. But it will not happen until we build the capacity of the farmers. The farmers we are talking of feeding Africa, uh, 45 million population feeding 1.3 billion, it's not peasant farmers, it's commercial farmers. How do we convert our uh, small-scale farmers to be agribusinesses? Mm -hmm. It's just a shift from peasant farming to agribusinesses, and they populate the value chains. Then they become competitive, and then they're able to, uh, to play in the market. At the moment, the structure is designed to make them fail. The structure is designed to ensure Africa never feeds itself. So it's upon the leaders to make that uh, critical change. Africa has 65% of a neutralized arable land. It has the most youthful population. By 2050, it will be 33% labor force of the entire world. So the ingredients of change are in place. So what we, need, we are lacking is, I don't want to say leadership, let me call it policy direction. 
You can also say leadership. <laughs> uh, we're among friends here. <laughs> so we need that transformative leadership, not the normal usual leadership. 